as soon as you start pulling on one thread, you realize that they're all connected. So we need to be thinking about all these different pieces of the puzzle to actually positively influence the river health and the potential of the survival of the salmon. Since we bought Dundragon, we've been looking to plant trees, protect them from browsing and allow them to re-establish it at the top of our higher ground. Three ways that benefits rivers and salmon. One is, one of my favourite phrases, by leaves we live, and the idea that they are cycling nutrients from the soil and that enriches the nutrients in the catchment. That will find its way into our rivers. A second thing they do is they will filter out runoff so as rain hits the top of the mountains, I can wash off silt and material and that can end up in our river system, clog up spawning beds. Keeping the water clean is a really important thing that our, our vegetation brings at the top of our catchments. And then lastly, shading. In summers and hot weather, keeping the water that's draining through those high areas cooler means that we've got cooler water in our rivers. That's really important. In 2020, the Fintor Nen and Lossi Rivers Trust changed its name from a fisheries trust to a rivers trust. That evolution saw the trust really taking a focus more on its role um, as a catchment management organisation to look at how we need to restore the habitat and mitigate climate risk so that the river as a whole is more resilient both for the wildlife but also for the communities that live alongside it. At the moment we're focusing very much in the upper catchment because that's where we really need to see more riparian woodland and peatland restoration really happening at scale. The peatlands in the monolith, particularly in our catchment, aren't in a great state and we need lots of restoration work and that'll affect water quality and clarity, but also the temperatures. There's a lot of dry areas on the hill. You can see big areas of exposed peatland and a real lack of water in places. When the river goes into spate here, it all happens very quickly. And I remember we've actually seen the water sweep one of the bridges away. So you, when you get signs like that, you think, OK, how do we, how can we tackle this and, and make a change? Rewetting the peatland is important because it's locking in the carbon. We're helping the wildlife up here. And we're also, importantly, slowing the flow down to the river itself. It's in a much more controlled way and in a purer form as well, because it's come through restored peatland. We're now on to phase two, so this last year we've had contractors, what we call reprofiling, so exposed peat areas, moving, moving vegetation, filling in the gaps, so there's less exposed peat. We're always very conscious that we're very new here. The land has been here for generations and generations. It's everyone's to enjoy and we want to be part of bringing back basically to make it as natural as it, as it once was. There are sources of income in restoring nature. Here at Dundragon we have an area of woodland that we took through the wooden carbon codes. So we now have a third party validated amount of carbon that that young woodland will sequester in its lifetime. So it's a source of income for us that helps fund our conservation work, helps us do more of this at a bigger scale. And here at Dundragon, we've started uh, sharing some of the, the revenue from that with two local community organisations. So this idea of natural capital, we think, is something that communities should have a share in. We underestimated how many people were ready for this conversation, and we've been pushing on more open doors than we thought. Looking at these projects from a landscape or a watershed scale is absolutely fundamental to really creating change in a way that's as coherent, as integrated as possible. Thank you.